Hello guys and welcome to a new Warno video today by me Vulcan. Today I have for you a preview of the 5th Panzer Division, a new German division available in the upcoming Devout update. Please remember that this is early access and was recorded on a preview build so what you see may be subject to change. I'm going to go through all of the units of course and then we'll put together a quick deck. There's also a couple of disclaimers that uh, the devs wanted me to make before we really get into this. First thing being the M13s that you're going to see today are currently placeholders uh, and are the American ones basically. Uh, they are going to receive their own German modifications and camos so that's something to look forward to. Also the Marder 182 is being reworked and fixed because currently it doesn't work and the Fuchs is also being reworked as well. So um, just those units to bear in mind. Uh, the rest is pretty cool and uh, we'll go through it. There will of course still be changes in the future so do bear that in mind. So yeah, first things first, Unimog. Um, this thing is a kind of cheap supply truck. It only has 500 supply. It doesn't make it that appealing but again it's cheap you only get four on a card though so not that great you do have to get the m13a1 munition and this thing you get nine on a card so going to be better it's also armored then there's the iltis furungs this thing is just a little command jeep simple as that really uh, then there's the m577 aig which is the german variant of the m577 so yeah, just a standard armoured command vehicle. So that's the logistics tab. Pretty simple stuff. Moving on to the infantry tab. Uh, we have the Feldjäger. These are your four, first unit. They're 20 point squads. Five or four men, sorry. Uh, with MP5A3s. Basically military police, right? Um, they come in with the Iltis. A uh, spammable early game unit, basically. But six on a card doesn't make them that appealing. However, there are the Sitterungs, and these guys, there is 11 of them, and they have 11 G3A4s. Now, the G3A4 does have a base accuracy of 60%, so even though they are technically, like, pretty poor on the experience front, in that they actually get a reduction to hit chance and rate of fire and stress resistance, the G3 is still pretty good. And I reckon if you were to have a bunch of these in a building fighting an, like another bunch of squads, you're going to outnumber them and outgun them. So the, I think these are going to be pretty good. They come in the Unimog truck. And we have the Pioneer Führer. These guys come with Uzis. <laughs> Hopefully they're using two hands to fire them. Uh, but the Carl Gustav is going to be their AT launcher, which does have 16 penetration. Not as much as I would have expected out of the Carl Gustav, but yeah, pretty cool. Um, they can be brought in with the Iltis and the Fuchs. Once again, the Fuchs is still being sort of reworked, so bear that in mind. Uh, then we have the Pioneer. Pioneers have nine G3s, an MG3, and satchels. So good at the close range with the 175 meter range. But this has been upped uh, since the last time I showed these off, but the satchel charges, that is. So they can kind of be effective at a longer range. Um, it kind of sounds silly that you'd lob a satchel charge 175 meters, but that's just like relative to how it is in game. <laughs> so bear that in mind. But 10 strength Pioneer squad with close range munitions and the MG3. Pretty good, honestly. And with the Fuchs, um, again, rework, rework is going to come in for that, but currently has the armor values you'd expect and the speed you'd expect. And I think the Fuchs in general in this game is going to be pretty good. So, yeah, there's that. Uh, they can also be brought in the Unimog. Then there's the Pioneer Flam. Uh, this has the Hand Flam Patron, which is apparently an incendiary launcher, which is pretty cool, uh, that they have access to. Ten Uzis. <laughs> Absolute Uzi squad. I'm curious how good these guys are going to be with the Uzi at close range, so I guess we'll find out eventually. But, yeah, great stuff. Uh, then there's the Pioneer Armbrust. These guys have the G3A4s, an MG3, and then the Armbrust, which is an anti-tank rocket launcher, just kind of like light AT, only 13 AP. Nothing too special about these. All of these pioneers can come in with the Fuchs and the Unibug. Then we have the Panzergrens. So the Panzergrenfuhrer 
is the first unit here. This is actually a really interesting unit. It's a leader which has both an AA piece and an AT piece. Both of them are terrible, but the fact it can kind of help itself defend against both sort of threats, ground and air, is quite nice. So, yeah, red eye, only 3 HE, kind of terrible, low accuracy, low range. Um, but, you know, enough of them hit a target and it's going to go down at the end of the day. It can also, of course, finish off units that have already been hit by, like, Spag, for example. Um, then there's the M72 Law, which, you know, will side shot most vehicles in one shot. And uh, front armor, maybe a couple shots. So, yeah, unless you're up against a heavy tank, this will probably do the job. And the Panzer Fjodor, leader, like the... It just seems very good. I mean, obviously, Fjodor means leader. But yeah, uh, in terms of the transports, we do have the Marder 1A2 available. Again, the Marders need a bit of a rework. That's why they're currently showing the Milan when they don't have it. Um, but yeah, the 20mm plus an MG3. The MG3 on the Marder 1A2 is actually on the back, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, um, quite a nice armoured vehicle. And then there's the Marder 1A3 which has the 20mm and an MG3. Uh, great infantry fire support again. Uh, this one, I'm not entirely sure about the stats, if they're going to stay the same when they rework them, so I'm not really going to go into it too much. Uh, but they're, they're going to be available. <laughs> we'll just put it like that. Right, the first type of Panzergren squad that we have is the Panzergren Karl Gustav, which is a six-man squad, which does have the Karl Gustav AT. Uh, so five G3s, the MG3, and the Carl Gustav there. Uh, then there's the Panzergrens that can come in with the M113s. Um, these are a nine man squad because they're not being rammed into the back of a Marder. And they have eight G3s, the MG3, and a Panzerfaust. The Panzerfaust is, uh, you know, it's okay. It's, it's a reasonably good AT weapon. Obviously, the Carl Gustav is better. But, um, yeah, it's good enough for now. Um, can take on, basically, anything that's not a heavy tank. Uh, then there's the Panzergrenadier with the Marders, which gets all of the types of Marders. So you've got the 1A2 Milan, which actually has the Milan 2 launcher on it, uh, which is going to have 23 AP at 2,650 meter range. Um, you can get the standard Marder 1A2 with, without the Milan launcher. Then there's a Marder 1A3 with a Milan launcher, which again has a Milan 2. And then the Marder 1A3. So, yeah. You can get a lot of these. Like, you can quite literally bring in all the cards of Milan's you want. So, there is six cards available of these. And if I select the right transport, uh, we can add multiple of these M1 or Marder 1A3 Milan's. And I think these Milan 2 launches are going to be pretty good. But I am expecting that potentially they'll go up in price. So I do bear that in mind. Uh, but for now, yeah, pretty cool. Um, I quite like the Panzergrins. And I really like the look of these Marders. I'm just going to quickly show you guys the model of this Marder 1A3. Because it is very cool. It looks lovely. And with the Marder 1A2, if they can get the back gun working, that's going to be awesome as well. It's going to look absolutely incredible yeah then we have the Jaegers there's some Jaeger leader with the Carl Gustav and then there's the uh, standard Jaeger squad which is the 11 man squad that we've seen already in the game um, 10 G3s the MG3 and the Panzerfaust there they can both be brought in with the Unimog that's your infantry tab let's move on to the artillery tab so first one is the Panzermorsa which is a 120 mil M113 Mortar. Um, yep, again, this is going to be changed. The M113 here, just kind of like a placeholder. Uh, then there's the M109A3GA1, uh, which is one of your long range artillery pieces that we've kind of seen before, uh, alongside the M110A2 or M111A2, which uh, is your long range howitzer does have the German markings on it, which is very cool. You can see that on the front and uh, on the barrel there. I do really like those little attention to detail. Very, very cool. Then moving on, we have the Lars, 
this is more of the unique German artillery that we have. Um, the Lars being a 36 rocket cluster munition uh, launcher. So, yeah, pretty awesome. Uh, this thing doesn't fire particularly fast. It'd be nice if it fired a bit faster. Uh, but I believe it can just like launch all 36 of its of its uh, rockets in one salvo if it wants to. Which is pretty nuts. The supply cost is really high. Although I don't believe that the supply cost here matches that of the Logi that it actually uses. Because I kind of tested it. Now, if it was 9,000 supply cost, it would take 18 supply trucks to fill it up. Which doesn't really make sense. And it's not the case in game. So do bear that in mind. Uh, but either way, for now, yeah, pretty cool launcher. Um, although, you know, rate of fire could use an increase. Uh, then there's the Mars, which is your big boy HE. 400 points. <laughs> this thing costs a lot. And uh, 12 227mm HE rockets. That's what this is. So there you go. Very cool. All right, let's move on to the tank tab. So we have some of the M48A2 CGA1s. <laughs> it's quite a lot <laughs> to, talk, to say there. <laughs> uh, 90 mil gun with a 50 cal and the M240. Very cool. Love the model. Looks awesome. I don't know what it is about the models in Warner, but they're just so good. They're just so good. Uh, this thing has 1,945 meter range with 13 um, penetration, which you know, if you compare it to the Leopard is quite a bit shorter. So, yeah. <laughs> it's only 40 points, though. <laughs> Let's move on to the Leopard 1A1A1. Now, this thing's 16 points, comes with 15 penetration. 15 penetration is going to be enough to, like, two-shot most APCs, uh, maybe one-shot them, and depending on their armor, of course. It's got decent accuracy and a relatively good range. Like 2,120 meter range is fine. It's like only like 100 meters shorter than the uh, Leopard 2A3. And rate of fire is decent, uh, 11 round per minute. So yeah, pretty nice. Uh, armor's pretty low though, so it's going to get chewed up by heavy tanks. But yeah, good for dealing with enemy APCs. Then there's the Leopard 1A5 Führer. This is a command tank, it does come with the command tax, so that's what makes it so expensive. The difference here being between the 1A5 and the 1A1A1 is the armor. So you can see the armor there goes up on the 1A5 to 10 front armor, which is quite significant. Also, you can see the changes to the model to represent real life with a higher telescope and the change of sight. Also, I believe the front of the turret is slightly different as well. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, then we have the Leopard 1A5, the standard one, which is 115 points base. Same stats as the the Fjorda version. But you do get the veterancy there. So, I mean, it, it looks like the veterancy is higher, which I think it actually is on the base tank at the moment. Yeah. Base veterancy must, or base accuracy, sorry, must be higher because otherwise, at two vet it would be the same. Okay, let's move on to the Jaguar One. Jaguar One has a Hot One weapon system with twenty-two penetration, which is pretty good. Two thousand six hundred and fifty meter range, one hundred sixty points. It's pretty expensive, honestly. I don't find much of a use for long-range ATGM weapons at the moment in Warno, so yeah, I'm not. A massive fan. I think one thing that would be cool to buff these Jaguars would maybe be to get the optics up since they do have pretty good optics on them uh, since they want to be engaging units from range. Um, then there's the Jaguar 2 which comes with the TOW 2 missile system uh, which is obviously uh, pretty good. 25 penetration. We've already seen the TOW 2 however on the Bradleys. Uh, then we have the Leopard 2A3 Führer. Uh, which is 365 points, gets the command tax of 100 points. Uh, but the Leopard 2A3, it gets a solid 70% uh, base accuracy and then 19 front armor and 19 penetration. So both of those, both the front armor and tank gun 
are like one less than the M1 A1 HA Abrams. Um, but yeah, pretty cool tank. But I love a good leopard. It's even got its uh, its window here. It was apparently changed on the 2A5 variant. Thank you to my stream for <laughs> letting me know about that. Um, yeah. Nice weak spot there in the front, which I think is the reason that it has the slightly worse front armor than a Abrams in this case. Yeah, cool Leopard 2A3 there. I really, really, again, like the model. Looks really awesome. Okay, let's move on to the Recon tab. So first of all, we have the Lux A1. This vehicle was incredibly good in Wargamer Dragon, um, just as like a, a swift recon that could deal with infantry and, and sort of uh, light armor. In this case, I'm yet to really try the 20 mil auto cannon too much, but could be just as effective. We'll have to wait and see. Um, it's a pretty speedy recon um, with decent firepower, 50 points. Then we have the Alf color. So these can come in with the Iltis, which is the Jeep. They can also come in with the Fuchs, which is the armored transport. And then they also have the UH-1D, which is the first we're going to see of the Huey in the game. So this is looking pretty cool with the MG3 mounted on the side. German colors. Very nice. like the look of that Huey. Uh, but the Alphacala themselves, they have three G3A4s, the MG3 and the M72 Law. Then there's the Jaeger Alphacala. We've seen these boys before. Ten G3A4s. MG, Panzerfaust, same as we, we've seen, as I just said. And then we have the Alouette. Uh, this looks really cool. The model, the, the detail on these models is actually awesome. Like, it really, really is. So, yeah, that looks very cool. Um, only five health. Uh, it is, you know, just a, <laughs> a string of metal, really, <laughs> with a bubble canopy. Uh, 180 kilometers per hour speed, not too fast, but going to be nice cheap spreadable recon helicopters finally we have the hulk the lrrp so <laughs> the green men coming out to show I, I feel like the first time I, I looked at this squad there was only one guy with like full green camo on him and the rest were in these masks <laughs> so I only thought it would ever be one model, but apparently there's there's two in this squad. So there you go. <laughs> we get two green men, really bringing the whole green army men thing to life. Like it. Okay. Anyway, um, they have uh, apparently ten G threes. It's probably going to change. <laughs> they should have probably three G threes. Uh, the HK twenty one and the satchels there, uh, but a very good optic. Four man squad and can be brought in with the Huey. So there you go. Alright, let's move on to the AA tab. AA tab doesn't have many units, but these are pretty effective units, uh, except from this one. <laughs> the Flowerack Red Eye. This Red Eye launcher is terrible. I already kind of mentioned it before because it's on the uh, Panzergunfuhrer leader here, and we I think we have it in another division as well. But yeah, it's awful. It's only got three damage. It's got 35% accuracy. Like, these are spammable, sure. That uh, you can get 12 on a card and they're only 35 points each. But you're not going to be hitting anything anytime soon. And if you do, you're not going to be killing it either. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, Gepard B2L. The Gepard looks awesome. I'm not going to lie. This thing looks absolutely awesome. The Oelicon, uh Dual 35mm absolutely beasting i think this thing does like a lot of damage honestly and uh yeah any aircraft that i've seen getting the airspace of one of these things goes down pretty fast um and then the helicopters would as well if they get in range so yeah pretty beastly and yeah you are however vulnerable to seed because you are using radar and yes, the radar spins <laughs> when you're in battle. Uh, then there's the Marda Roland 2. This thing has pretty decent range against helicopters. It's actually longer than the Gepard. 2,650 meter range, but suffers in range against aircraft. 
so only 2473 meter range so it's a similar concept that they had i think going in wargamer dragon as well um but yeah fire and forget surface to air missile get 12 of them fires two then reloads so there you go it's a 10 second reload on it in case you're wondering <laughs> then there's the marder Roland three which again is radar all of these Oh, actually, that one's not radar. Um, this one is radar. Um, this one says fire and forget. So I'm curious if this actually gets targeted by seed or not. Still technically got a radar, so I don't know about that. But yeah, anyway, the Ronin 3 definitely has a radar. Um, two, 250 points for this thing. Has 3,004 meters range against helicopters. Like, that's pretty insane. And then 2,827 meter range against aircraft. So same range as the Gephardt B2 hour against aircraft. With, well, <laughs> I say the same. Three meters more. Uh, and then the helicopter, yeah, 3,000. That's a long, long way. And uh, nice damage on these. It does have six damage on the Roland 3 missile as opposed to five on the standard Roland 2. So you're going to be hitting that extra little bit, which is really, really nice against anything with armor. Although I'm not sure if armor still affects damage. It's, yeah, regardless, um, relatively nice AA weapon just costs a lot. <laughs> it really does. 250 points, mm, not 100% convinced. So, yeah, there you go. Accuracy is also not great. Let's move on to the helicopters, which there aren't many of. The BI-105, par 1, is the first one. Um, it's basically two BO BO one hundred fives. I'm not going to like <laughs> mess you guys about. It's they're both the same. Just one has a hot one. One has a hot two. The hot one has twenty two AP, two thousand six hundred fifty meter range, fifty percent accuracy, and the hot two has twenty four penetration, two thousand six hundred fifty meter range, sixty five percent accuracy, which is actually really good. And uh, I believe the uh, supply cost goes up there slightly as well. So yeah, there you go. The hot two system. This helicopter actually looks pretty good on paper. Uh, currently in game, it's not performing really as well as it looks it like it should. But yeah, yeah I think it's going to be a beast once it's fixed. All right, moving on to the air tab. Now, the air tab here is pretty extensive compared to some of the other tabs in this division. First of all, we have the Alpha Jet A. Uh, this looks really awesome. It's a rocket Alpha Jet. Now, I'm not usually a fan of the Alpha Jets because of their payloads in the other divisions that we have so far. Like there is like a bombing one and a napalm one, but they only have like two bombs each. So, you know, the effectiveness of those is very limited. However, because rockets are actually reasonably accurate and high damaging to infantry, for example, this Alpha Jet could be great for picking off you know, units of infantry that are more expensive, you know, like a motor stroke in Meta Squad, or um, you know, just motor stroke in general. You get a couple motor stroke kills with one of these, and you pays itself off because they're only seventy five points. So, yeah, it's pretty nice. It has twenty percent ECM, exceptional agility. It has the twenty seven mil gun underneath with its uh, with its rockets. I believe the the rocket count currently is wrong, so do bear that in mind. But yeah, once it gets its full rocket payload, which should be I think like seventy two rockets. It's going to be pretty nuts. And then we have the F-104G AA. <laughs> These things are always like <laughs> crazy to me. Like how they fly with this small of a wingspan is nuts. But regardless, pretty nice aircraft. Um, they turn like an absolute truck. You know, they just don't. Uh, which I guess makes sense. But they are very nice for like sniping helicopters and, you know, heading on aircraft in numbers because they get the Vulcan gun and they also get the AIM-9. So the AIM-9, you know, getting four of them is pretty nice for taking down helicopters. And then obviously the Vulcan's going to be doing damage as well. So, yeah, this can seem to one pass at least five health helicopters. And I'm not, I haven't am not really tried it on anything more than that yet. Like the 10 health helicopters, see how much, how effective it is. But regardless, I, I expect it to do relatively well. Only has 10% ECM, but super fast, 1,400 kilometers per hour speed. Then we have the F4FAA, which is 
the Vulcan minigun again with the AIM 9s. These AIM 9s are again going to be great for shooting down helicopters, uh, good en masse against enemy fighters. Uh, the nice thing about the F4F is it does have 30% ECM, so maybe a little bit of a safer bet, but a more expensive bet as well. Uh, so yeah, you might not be able to afford to lose as many of these as you potentially could the F104G. Moving on, we have the F4F with the uh, AT weapons. So they get four Maverick missiles, uh, which have 26 AP. We've seen the Mavericks on the A-10 Thunderbolt. Uh, so 3,180 meter range. Accuracy, kind of trash, 40%. Uh, but again, reasonably good a ACM. Actually quite nice speed for an AT aircraft. They're going to be able to like hit and get out of there quite easily. Then there's the Tornadoes. Now, I was really excited to see the Tornadoes in the game, and they do look beautiful. I mean, again, just all of these models just look awesome. They really do. Um, but either way, um, <laughs> the 27mm Malza is in this boy uh, with the three 450kg bombs in this case with two AIM-9Ls. It does have exceptional air optics with the 1,463km per hour speed with 30% ECM. It's a fast boy with a decent amount of ECM there for sure. So, nice tornado and uh, then we have the tornado ids with the gbu payload these are two 925 kilogram bombs and they do a lot of damage you can one shot medium tanks with these very easily uh, so a very nice aircraft very strong and i'm looking forward to getting some nice kills with these that's for sure then we have the Tornado IDS, the MW1, which is the multiple like cluster launcher thingy. <laughs> the MW1 KB44 has 4,704 bomblets, which it fires off at a rate of fire of 91,045, apparently. <laughs> It's pretty nuts. It, it it sounds awesome in game. It really does. This thing is incredible. Like guys, when you get your hands on this on these divisions, try out this thing because it is cool. It's not the most effective cluster plane, but it is very awesome. I'll I'll, I'll give you that much. I think it's going to be pretty good against um, infantry more than anything else. So yeah. Nice tornado IDS there. Also has its wings back. Look at that. Very cool. Uh, one thing I did point out to the devs actually was that these have their fuel probes out, which is a cool detail, but you probably wouldn't have it out in this scenario. Uh, this one actually has it tucked away and its wings back. So it's sort of two configurations there. It'd be nice if the, the wings adjusted, like based on how fast they were going in game. But yeah, anyway, <laughs> regardless, getting sidetracked, let's move on. Uh, five uh, cluster bombers, uh, fl cluster bombs on this one. Uh, does have those cluster munitions, which have the penetration. So you can see the difference here between the MW1 and the standard cluster. The MW1 doesn't have penetration, so it's not very good against armor. Uh, whereas the, this cluster is good against armor with the nine penetration there so that's going against the top armor of enemy tanks then there's the tornado ids with the at2 which is an electro optical fire and forget anti-tank missile 26 ap 3180 meter range and 40 percent accuracy so similar to the if i can click the right one the maverick Although the Maverick, I believe... Oh, okay. It is Fire and Forget as well, yeah. So they're both Fire and Forget. The Tornado one there as well. Oh, let's move on to this Raptor. So this Raptor doesn't really have a name yet, but it has the AGM-88 Harm, which is a seed missile. 
anti-radiation with a 65% accuracy. Very nice indeed. Lovely looking aircraft, the Falcon. Yes, indeed. There's that. And then there's the F4F HE bomber, which has the 12 227 kilogram bombs. So basically this air tab consists of Alpha Jet, F104, F4F, and Tornadoes and Falcons. And then payloads, switches between them. Yeah, very awesome. I like the air tab a lot here, and uh, I'm going to have a lot of fun messing around with these, even if they aren't very effective. But regardless, there you go. That is the West Germans in Warno, at least one of the divisions, the 5th Panzer Division. So we'll quickly go through and make a division out of this. So I'm going to start off by just popping in the M113A1 munition trucks. I'm going to add some Führungs. Um Actually, what's the availability on these? It's, only, it's three. Okay. Yeah, we're going to keep the trucks. And then I might add one more card of the Unimogs just because... You're going to need more supply. <laughs> this is a very light on supply division. And so you're going to need as much as you can get. All right, I'm definitely going to be bringing in the Citadungs. I think they're going to be a good early game. Uh, then we'll probably use the Panzergunfuhrer here. I will likely just bring in the Panzergunfuhrer in the Iltis. I am tempted to also have the Carl Gustav of the Pioneerfuhrer. Mainly because... It's cheaper. So this is sort of one that I would keep in the back of a of a of a sector to actually cap the sector. Whereas the Pioneer Führer is definitely one that could be more offensive. So that's kind of what I'm thinking here. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And we'll bring in the that with the Fuchs. The Fuchs will probably not be ten points, by the way, when when it actually comes out. Because that is very cheap, especially considering it's cheaper than the actual truck. Uh, but yeah, anyway, we'll bring them in Fuchs regardless. The Pioneer is pretty nice. But I'm thinking what we're probably going to do is bring in some Panzergrens in the M1A3 Milan. I might even go so far to upvet them because that also upvets the Milan. And I'll bring in some in the standard 1A3 as well. And yes, at the moment, the one with the Milan costs less than the one without the Milan. But again, work in progress. Things will probably change. To do better than mind. But we'll bring in one with and one without. And then we'll do... Let's see... Maybe some Jaeger, just because they're cheap. Pretty good. I'll bring in some Jaeger. I think we'll just do another Marda unit. Though I really want to try out like the Pioneers of the Flam and the Armbrust. Well, the Armbrust is just standard AT, so it's nothing exciting. Maybe I'll just bring in some Pioneer Flam to try out that hand. Flambatron. Yeah, I think that'll do. This actually hasn't given me as much as I wanted, really. It may be worth dropping the Pioneer Führer in order to get another card of Panzergrenz with the Marder 1A3 Milan. I'm going to bring in a card with one vet as opposed to these two being two vet. Actually, this one doesn't need to be two vet. That one can be uh, one vet as well with the standard 1A3 there. Cool, so we're going to have plenty of Marders, that's for sure. Uh, moving on, we have the Artillery. I'm definitely going to be using a card of the Lars. You get four on one card, and we also get three on one card of the Mars. So we'll bring in both of those. And I'll use some of the M109A3s. They only get two on the card of one of those. Yeah, we'll use those as our sort of smoke and long-range artillery. And then the rockets are just rockets. <laughs> Good show. All right, let's move on. Uh, tank tab. We will do probably the leopards for the most part. You can actually get six of these on a card at the moment. They might get changed in the future. But yeah, we're going to probably upvet them a little bit, bring them in at 
two vet there. I'm going to bring in all three cards of those, absolutely. And then we're going to bring in a card of the Leopard 1A5 Fjord. I want to try out the Jaguar as well, even though I think it's going to be terrible. If we go to Max Vet, they never miss. So I'm kind of curious about that. Let's just bring in a couple of those. We'll bring in yeah, the Leopard Command Tank. That gives us two of those. And then we will bring in some Leopard 1A5s. And also some Leopard 1A1s. Yeah, I think we're going to do that. Okay, moving on. We have the Recon tab. Definitely going to bring in some of these looks. We're going to bring in a card of the Jäg Aftodder because they're going to be pretty good. A card of the Alouette. And uh, of course we're going to bring in the Green Man. <laughs> we got to. How could we not? We'll bring them in the helicopter. Lovely. Alright, moving on to the AA tab. We'll do Flak Red Eyes. Even though I am not convinced that they're going to be very good, I think having man pads is really, really useful. So, yeah, we'll, I'll see how they do. I'm probably going to have to have them in like squads of three or four whenever I'm using them. So I'll bring like four at a time and just have them all in the same place. Uh, but we'll bring in the Gepard. I'm going to up the Gepards. Actually, no, I'm not because we don't really have much space here. So we'll do four Gepards. Six Marder Ronin 2s and six Marder Ronin 3s. Then the helicopters will bring in the Hot 2 variant of the BO105. And then we have the air tab. So I definitely want to be messing around with the Tornado IDS, of course. We'll probably want Seed. We'll bring that in. And then. I'm thinking we go F109 or F104s, sorry. And then Alpha Jets. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get many of these on a card. It'd be nice if you get more of them on a card. This really isn't optimal. Just putting that out there. This is not an optimal battle group, but it is a fun one. <laughs> I'm just, just going to be trying out all these lovely units. Um, I think realistically. This is going to be a unit that's used a lot. Uh, the F4F is probably going to be better than the F104 in most cases. And then you're probably going to have the seed. The seed's probably going to sit in there. Definitely not the M1W though in a, you know, peak deck. You're most likely going to rely more on the uh, F4F8 or F4 AT or the Tornado traditional cluster bomber. So yeah, there you go. That is it. That is the 5th Panzer Division. Let me just save this. And I will show you guys the finished product. There it is. Bam. The 5th Panzer Division. I think this looks awesome. Uh, the Leopard 2A3s, they seem to perform okay in combat. We'll have them backed up by the Leopard 1A5 for for leadership. There's going to be plenty of Marders to go around, that's for sure. Got some decent AA, although a bit worried about it, most of it being radar, especially considering how expensive it is. Uh, and then the air tab is just great. It's like really varied. Uh, all around, I think the 5th Panzer Division is looking like a pretty decent division. Uh, the main thing that I think is going to be the test here is how Leopard 2A3s match up to TA to use and how Panzergrands and the Citadelungs and the Jaegers match up to uh, all of the Russian infantry, like the Sapari and the um, well, the Mudschutzen now in the 7th Panzer as well. Yeah, so we'll see if they match up well. But regardless, that's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this look at the 5th Panzer Division. Please remember that it is, of course, work in progress. It's like a work in progress build that I have here uh, that the devs have allowed me to show you early before even the people in early access get their hands on it. So, yeah, awesome. Big thumbs up to them. Uh, but, yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye. Goodbye.